Welcome back to another episode of Open at Microsoft. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Radius, a new cloud native application platform, and diving into how you can get up and running with your very first Radius app. Stay tuned. All right, welcome in. My name is Aaron Crawfis, and I'm joined by Ryan Nowak. And today, we're gonna to be taking a look at how to author your very first Radius application and some tips and tricks to get you going. Ryan, uh, could you tell us a little bit about Radius applications and kind of what you can do with them? Sure. So the idea between applications and Radius is that you're really telling us about the requirements of your application. So what are the things that you want running? What are the dependencies you have on databases or message queues? And, and what are the requirements of the app? Like what, what's the configuration? How should it behave? That kind of thing. Uh, the hope is that it's, it's high level, it's declarative, it's something that developers can, can understand and, and kind of use to, uh, to talk about how their app needs to work and, and be helpful to you. Um, and I think what we're gonna do today is uh, kind of pick up where like some of the Radius tutorial content leads off. So imagine you've done a tutorial, you've kind of deployed some of our applications, and now you need to get something of yours working. Uh, where would you start? What would you need to do? That sounds awesome. Yeah, let's dive in. I'd, I'd love to learn a little bit about why, how we can get going. Okay, so let's, let's look at an example here. And I'm, I'm kind of picking up where the tutorial looks off, leaves off. This is, again, this is one of our images, but I think some of these features are, are obviously useful for your applications. Um, and so I've got this bicep file here, just a really quick tour. Um, I've got this container called demo. That's the container, main container that we're working with. And then I've got this Redis cache database. So I've got a to-do application here that talks to a database. So pretty standard basic stuff that I think we can all get our head around. Perfect. And this is like what the developer would describe when they're talking about their app. That, that's right. That's right. So you would, you would describe your architecture here as well as kind of how you want these things to run, what dependencies you have on things like databases. Perfect. So something you can probably notice right away is we've got a hard-coded version number here, yep. uh, which you can get away with if you're building a tutorial or a sample, but that's not... Great. Yeah, I got it up and running, but now I actually need to be able to yeah. publish this. As soon as you need to have like a CI or CD system hooked up, you're going to have a, a real version number. So let's let's do that. Let's make a real version number and let's let's make it so we can pass that in. Perfect. So I'll declare a parameter here in Bicep. I'm going to call that. I think I want to call it image tag. It's a string. Um, I'm not going to give that a default value. If I wanted to, I could, you know, put a nice description on this and say you know, container image tag or some other kind of descriptive thing that I want. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I have this parameter, I can start using string interpolation to use it. So down here, I'll just bring in image tag. So you can see that we're oh, using perfect. the parameter there. Yep. And then I've got two ways that I could work with this. One way that I could work with this is I could pass it in at the command line. So I could run rad deploy and I could pass a parameter that way. Okay. Uh, but a way that I really like um, and, and I think a lot of people like these days is, well, let's actually check in that value so we can version control it. That makes it easy for us to roll things back mm -hmm. if we need to roll back what's in production. So imagine we're doing GitOps or some other kind of CI CD system attached to this. And let's put that here. I think, I think the value right now is, is 0 0.32. Yep. We'll just put that here in this file. Perfect. And then instead of passing that parameter in at the command line when we deploy, we'll pass in the file say, hey, this, this file is where you should be getting those parameters from. Makes sense. So that's the image tag kind of done and dusted. We figured that out. Okay. Now, another thing that you may need to do is, well, maybe you need to set some environment variables. Maybe there are required settings. Maybe you have different behaviors depending on where you're deploying to. Mm -hmm. um, and a good example of that might be like different kinds of logging you do depending on the environment you're in. Yep. So maybe I have an environment here like I'll say log log level, sure, let's just say log level. And uh, I could hard code that to something like info. I could um, use Bicep to declare some more conditional logic, but probably what I really want is a parameter again. So let's, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna declare a parameter for that. Param log level. I'll, I'll default that to info. So we're going to be info by default if that's not passed in. Okay. Uh, Code Copilot wanted to do that, and I think it's a good <laughs> idea. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if we want to, also, by the way, uh, Copilot was wrong about these commas, but we can also do things like restrict the set of allowed values. So if somebody tries to pass in something invalid, we're not going to debug or we're not going to work. Um, and so I'm going to take out a couple of these, but let's imagine that we support debug info and error, and info is going to be the, info is going to be our default. 
Okay. Um, let's parameterize this as well. And we've got a, got a default value here. And let's say that when we're going to Azure, um, I'm gonna set the other parameter that we're using. Well, let's declare another one, log level here. And let's say that if we're deploying to production, it's gonna be info. And then let's also grab this parameter. And let's say that if we're deploying to dev, that it's going to be debug. Perfect. So we'll just, when we do deploy this later, we'll just make sure that we're using the right parameter file depending on where we're, where we're deploying to. And that makes it easy for us to look at and compare what the settings are for different environments we're using. Gotcha. Uh, what should we do next? Um, so let's say that uh, our, our service now, uh, maybe we have another like backend service, or maybe we have another uh, service that we need this demo app to talk to. How, how, how can I make um, uh, an application have more than just one container? So, so you can just put whatever you need to in here. That's the answer. It's pretty easy. If we, if we put something else in this file, it's just going to be part of the same application. Now, I'm just going to do this quickly. We'll, we'll run the same container twice. Uh, we'll just kind of close our eyes on that one. I'll call this backend. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm declaring, I'm giving it a name. So the name that the system is going to have is, is backend. I'm going to clear out some of the things that we don't need here. And uh, we'll drop this connection too. And I'll call this backend. And I've also declared a variable name called backend that I can use as a reference inside the file if I want to. Mm -hmm. Now, if I want to declare a connection to this, the way that I declare connections between my services is, first of all, I'll declare um, a name for the connection. Connections are named because you can have a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And then for the source, I could, I could put in an ID here, but I'll also, I can also put in a URL. So let's say that I'm going to connect to backend 3000. Gotcha. Um, and this is pretty cool because using a URL allows us to talk to things that aren't deployed as part of the same file. Radius mm -hmm. will understand that this container is talking to that container, include that in, in something we call the app graph, mm -hmm. without those two things needing to be deployed at the same time. So if we move our backend to another repo in the future, that can still this can all still work the same way. Gotcha. So as your team kind of grows and like different microservices kind of like get more teams, like it all still works and they can deploy as separate teams if they need to. That's right. We're not introducing any sort of order dependency in how we do deployment, and we're not introducing any sort of coupling of like this has to happen before that has to happen. This team has to work together with that team. Perfect. What Radius is going to do with this, by the way, is it's going to do two things. It's going to document the fact that the connection exists. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's looking at that information can see there should be traffic flowing this way. Uh, and the other thing that it's going to do is it's going to inject some environment variables based on this semantic name. Mm -hmm. So that if in the future something like the URL would change, we can write code that is independent of that. Cool. Um, Let's do something else. Um, we've probably all heard about health checks before. Mm -hmm. uh, health checks are useful because health checks allow the runtime system to give you feedback about whether or not your application is working correctly. And uh, it, within Radius, we've kind of adopted the same terminology that the cloud native community has used because we think it's good terminology. There's, there's liveness, which says, hey, is this thing crashing? Should it be restarted? And then there's readiness, which is like, are my dependencies working? Am I ready for traffic? Gotcha. Right? And so we can just add a liveness check to this application. I've got a little buffer here where I'm pasting things. And so I'm defining a liveness probe. It's going to do an HTTP GET. It's going to hit this URL in my app. So if I want to customize the way health checking works for my app, I just need to handle this URL. Mm -hmm. Radius is going to pass this information through to the runtime where I'm running. In this case, it's Kubernetes. Kubernetes is going to know that it should check that URL. Gotcha. Very cool. Uh, now, we mentioned Kubernetes. Uh, and one other thing that might be interesting to think about with the context of Kubernetes is, well, what if I need to do something that Kubernetes supports, but Radius doesn't have as part of its definition? Oh, gotcha. So kind of like punching through that abstraction. Punching through the abstraction, because Radius is a little higher level than Kubernetes. It's meant to be a little bit simpler. But I think we all have cases now and then where we, no, I really need it to work this way yep. kind of thing. Um, and let's let's do an example of one of those. So the way that we approached we way that we've approached that in Radius is we have this runtimes feature here, 
And what runtimes allows us to do, there's just Kubernetes here right now. What runtimes allows us to do is it allows us to specify information that only applies to that runtime. So because we're using Kubernetes in this case, it means that this information is gonna be passed through to Kubernetes. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set some resource limits on the pod. Mm -hmm. We haven't implemented that feature yet in Radius, uh, but it is implemented in Kubernetes, and so we can just kind of reach down to that layer and do what we need to do. Gotcha, and so I can customize anything about the Kubernetes pod spec and anything inside you of that. You can customize anything about the Kubernetes pod spec. We just pass that information through, and I think I'm missing a brace here, which is why it's unhappy. So anything that goes inside this pod spec is uh, is a merge patch that's going to be applied. If you don't know what that is, just think about it as setting properties. If I needed to set like a networking policy or capabilities or resource limits or scheduling behaviors or any of this really low level stuff, you can just kind of reach in there and do it. Cool. Yeah, this is awesome. It seems like it's pretty easy using Bicep to just go in and like customize the settings that I need and then like you just showed, punch through for those times when. That's right. And as we add more runtimes in the future, you're going to be able to set those settings here. So you can say things like, if I'm going to runtime A, set these settings. If I'm going to runtime B, set these settings. Cool. Okay, so we're done editing the uh, app.bicep. Let's deploy this and see if it works. And I'm going to use rad run for this app.bicep. And then we need to remember to pass in that parameter file. So I can do that with parameters and then at the file name. I called it app.params.localdev json. And then if you were deploying into production Azure, this would have been the prod Azure. It would be the Azure one. And I, and I like to kind of put these next to each other so I can easily diff them and, and see like, okay, mm. this is what I actually changed to go to different environments. Perfect. So what's happening right now is Radius is processing that bicep file. Um, it's completed deploying our backend container. It's completed deploying Redis using that recipe. And now it's going to deploy our container, um, our demo container, which is kind of our front end. And that's processing right now. You can see that that finished and we should get a pop-up here. It looks like uh, somebody blocked that for me very helpfully. And so you can see that we've hit that container here in the, uh, oh, we've actually hit the backend. Here in the, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> we've actually hit the back end here in the code space, um, but anyway, you can see that that worked. So all these settings got applied. We got the app up and up and running, and this is hopefully some helpful uh, tips about how you can get started adapting Radius and using it for some of your own projects. Oh, that's awesome! And so if I wanted to get kind of build off of this and start doing my own, ratify my own applications, uh, what are some places I can go to get started? The best place to go is radapp.io. You can find our docs there and all of our, our information, tutorial content, and samples. Um, we've got we've got the eShop on microservices sample uh, that we can point you towards that's a bigger, more complicated sample if you want examples. Uh, we've also got a Discord. You can find links on our website as well. And there's a bunch of helpful people in Discord that would love to answer your questions. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, walking us through how we can get up and running with an application. And thank you for joining us on Open App Microsoft. Uh, we're looking forward to having you join us on the next episode.